Hi, my name is Jenna. I'm an occupational therapy student at Gannon University, and today I'm going to take a trip back in time to talk with one of the early pioneers of occupational therapy. Let's go. Eleanor Clark Slagle was born on October 13, 1871 in Hobart, New York. Shh. Oops, looks like we went back too far. Let's go further ahead in history. This looks right. I think this is her house over here. Hello, I'm Eleanor Clark Slagle. Hi, I'm Jenna. I'm from the future. I travel back in time so I could further my knowledge in occupational therapy, and I was wondering if I could interview you. Is now a good time? Yeah, come on in. I see. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? No, go right ahead. First off, how did you become interested in occupational therapy? Well, my father had become disabled due to a neck injury he suffered during the Civil War. Also, my brother had gone through tuberculosis. So since my family had been through disability, I have seen OTs work with them. Also, while working at the Kanakee State Hospital in Illinois as a social worker, I became very inspired to work in the field of occupational therapy. That's very interesting. I want to work in occupational therapy because I too had a family friend that was disabled. I always saw occupational therapists helping him and I began researching more and more on the profession and I fell in love. Okay, enough about me. I remembered a lot happened in 1917. Could you elaborate on what happened in that year? Yes, in 1917, this was the year the profession was formalized. The exact date was March 15, 1917, and I was one of the founders of the American Occupational Therapy Association. I was named the supervisor of all OT programs in the state of Illinois. I also started the Henry B. Favreau School of Occupations, which served as a model for other occupations programs. I also conducted occupational therapy training courses at the Hall House in Chicago. Wow, you were very busy during that year. So, is there anything else you did in your lifetime? Of course, I was a very busy woman trying to promote the profession. From 1918 to 1922, I directed occupational therapy research for the state of Illinois and then organized a therapy program for the state's mental hospitals. But up until this period, occupational therapy had not been taken seriously as a medical career. Therefore, I began working to promote the field of occupational therapy as a professional occupation. During the third annual meeting of the National Society for the Promotion of Occupational Therapy, I was elected president. In 1922, I established the headquarters of AOTA in New York and worked as a director of OT for over 20 years at the New York State Department of Mental Hygiene. You've contributed so much to this profession. Occupational therapists everywhere look up to you. So I just have one more question for you. You established habit training. Could you explain what this is? Yeah, habit training is a method of re-educating patients on decent habits via substituting helpful habits with the bad habits. This training required all hospital personnel and took place 24 hours a day. I summarize it as directed activity and it differs from all other forms of treatment in that it is given in increasing doses as the patient improves. Thank you so much for all your time. I can't wait to go back to my class and share everything I learned. No problem. I'm so glad you came to visit. Have a safe trip back to Gannon, and I hope you use my research to further the field of occupational therapy. I guess it's time to go back to Gannon. My notebook. Thank you. Research is key to occupational therapy. I'll remember that. Bye. Bye.
Eleanor Clark Slagle died on September 18, 1942, in Phillips Manor, New York. Still today, she is known as the mother of occupational therapy and for professionalizing the profession.